Welcome to Wesley Impact, I'm Keith Garner. Are you somebody who enjoys learning about history? So glad you're able to be part of the programme. I asked the question about history because I'd like to look at a number of things from angles, such as history. First thing, my guest on the studio is Meredith Lake. Meredith is an historian of religion, society and culture. She gained her PhD from the University of Sydney. She's written a number of books, one of which has been recognised as the Australian Christian Book of the Year. And she's also host of the ABC radio programme called Soul Search. Meredith is developing what will be a distinguished career and I'm looking forward to speaking with her a little later on. We'll also look at history from the perspective of school children. Throughout this year I've shared a number of videos with people who have been in our aged care villages with primary school students going in there, talking in our retirement villages and having conversations with residents. Through this, students have learnt about Australian history based on first-hand experiences and our residents have benefited greatly from talking to children. You'll see another one of those stories a little later in the show. And I'll be joined in the studio by Craig Gower and the Wesley Impact Band who will sing for us and I'm looking forward to sharing thoughts on this ongoing series looking at important words in the Christian life. Today I'll be thinking about the word freedom. And that's a word that has so many different aspects to it. I think it's important as we think of our Christian history and mission to think of the message of freedom. And as with so many of the words, it's capable of being misunderstood. And I'm looking forward to sharing with you later in the show. Wesley Mission operates a number of retirement villages and nursing homes. And we've got many hundreds of years, uh, hundreds of people and 200 years of experience when we call upon people to share with others. From students in local schools, interact with residents. There's a wonderful learning process. It's two-way, going both ways. Here's an example of a conversation that took place recently. Where were you born? London, England. What job did you have? I was a representative for a washing machine company in England, and I also did it out here. Did you have any hobbies? Yes, I liked playing bridge, knitting, sewing, gardening. I love gardening. Why did you like those hobbies? Because kept your brain going and it got you out mixing with different people. There used to be about sort of a crowd of us, about always. I'd go four times a week and there'd be at least 80 of us. What is your favourite animal? A dog, because they become affectionate towards you and they do as they're told most of the time. <laughs> What's the secret to living a good long life? Enjoying everything every day eating good food, getting to know people, going out whenever you can to have a pleasant time, and generally enjoy the world, I think. There's a whole world out there to enjoy. you just got to have the nerve to go and see it when you get a bit older. Why is it important to see the world? Well, I think curiosity. Don't you want to see the world? Wouldn't you like to go to another country and see how they live? Would you like to go to China, for instance, just to see how they live? Or go to South Africa? Yes. yes. You would, yes. And then you'll get to know how other people live. Because the more you know about how other people live, the less likely there is that we have wars. We won't be afraid of each other. That's one of the things we've got to stop being afraid of each other. Everybody is of the same value in their country, so you learn to like them for what they are. So when you get old enough and you can go on these trips, you go because it will give you a much better outlook on life. Is there anything else you would like to say? Anything else I'd like to say? Um, yes, I'm glad to have the opportunity to meet you two young people. <laughs> and 
I hope you're glad you met me. And remember that you've got a whole life in front of you and so many things you can do if you want to. And you like your school, so that's good, isn't it? Yeah. Do the best you can there. And from there you'll go forward to doing other things. We need you young people to learn as much as you can. Because there's so much you can learn now. When I was your age, there wasn't much to learn. Because that was 90, 96 years ago. <laughs> so, do your parents like, would they like you to go travelling? Yes. Yeah. Good. Good. If you would like to learn more about Wesley Mission, visit wesleymission.org.au. You can find help in our community services, connect with our church and congregations, discover a volunteer role that suits you, stay up to date on the latest news and information, donate to support our work and help make a positive difference in your community. You can also connect with us on social media and subscribe to receive the latest news and information about Wesley Mission directly into your inbox. Visit wesleymission.org.au. So please be in touch if we can be of any help to you or a loved one for that matter in any way. The contact details are on the screen now. My guest today is Meredith Lake, an ABC presenter. She's recognised in the, the world as an historian, an author, academic and commentator. Welcome, Meredith. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. You, you've written a, a number of books, uh, hosted a radio programme, done television <laughs> work. So was, was media, or whatever media represents, was that on the agenda from the beginning? Oh, agenda's a really strong word. It makes it sound like it was all planned out when you put it like that. But no, not at all. Working in radio now is a complete surprise, a complete change of gear, really, for me in my life. So how did it come about? Well, if we wind back the clock, maybe two years, mm -hmm. I just had a baby, my third one. My most recent book had just been launched and I thought I was at the end of a road, yes. not the beginning of one. Mm -hmm. um, I'd spent four years writing that book, telling the story of the Bible in Australia and all the things that Australians have thought about that very complex and engaging text. And I really thought, I didn't know what was next. I was going to spend time with my baby, which I did. Mm -hmm. But in the mix of all the interviews and conversations that the book enabled me to have, the ABC came knocking at my door and said, hey, there's a, one of our religion shows needs a new presenter. Mm -hmm. Would you be interested? Mm -hmm. And I don't think I'd realised that that was my dream job. But as soon as someone said that, I was like, oh, gee, I hope they choose me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was just delighted to be able to host Soul Search. So did writing that book kind of contribute to, to this journey that led to there in your mind? I don't mean by the actual invitation, but did it yeah. kind of open up ways of thinking about life and, and people? I see the show as an extension of the conversation that yeah. I was interested yeah. in with the book. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Because what I've always been interested in as a person, as a Christian, but certainly as a historian, is how the people around me in this place that we call Australia make sense of faith, make sense of meaning. How do we join the dots and navigate the challenge of life? Mm. And for the last 250 years or so, a lot of people have done that mm. in dialogue with the church, with mm. the Bible, with mm. the Christian story. Mm. And so I wanted to lean into that and listen into that and mm. see how people have gone with that. Mm. And that's largely what the book's about. There's sceptics, you know, believers, all kinds of people, mm. activists, writers, politicians, they're all there. Mm. And the show in some ways is about broadening that out even further people from Christian traditions, but other traditions as well. What sort of things do you talk about on the show? Well, it's about... It's a good advert, you realise yeah, that, Yeah, sure, you? <laughs> yeah. I love to talk about it because it's so interesting to me. It's about what people's spirituality, their faith, their religion actually looks like in mm. their life. Mm. How do they navigate the crisis of a pandemic? Mm -hmm. How do they make meaning when someone close to them dies? Mm -hmm. How do they look after their children? How do they join the dots mm. as they move through life? Mm. Uh, so we have all kinds of people on. Sometimes they're very famous. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes, I think we had the Archbishop of Canterbury mm. uh, <laughs> once, mm. probably the most famous person we've had. Uh, but normally it's people that you might not have heard of, but sure. who have a fascinating story, who are very thoughtful about their faith and able to talk about mm. it. Mm. So what do you consider yourself to be? Media personality <laughs> of, of the programme, academic? historian, or a combination of all those things? Well, a combination, but I think the big themes for me are storytelling. Yes. 
I love to... But first, to be a storyteller, you need to be a listener. Yeah. And that might mean listening to the person sitting across from you, like we are now, yeah. or it might mean listening to the voice of someone in the archives as a historian who wrote that letter that you're reading 200 years later. Yes. But it is still about listening and trying to pay attention to how someone else saw the world and, and, and work from there. So of all the disciplines necessary to do the work you do, listening is, is paramount and, and for you the most important, really. I think it's for life, not just for work. Um, and it's a way of being a neighbour to the people around us before we speak to, to listen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I mean, for, for us at Wesley Mission, listening to the voices of those who are struggling is mm -hmm. part of our journey. And I'm sure that's the sort of thing you hear in, in conversations with people. I think listening can be very radical, especially if you do... Yeah. It's a kind of hospitality, I mm -hmm. think, a way mm -hmm. of saying, you matter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be anything, but you have a story to tell and I'm here to listen to you. It's a, a kind of solidarity. It's mm -hmm. a kind of hospitality. There's an implicit generosity in listening. So for me, it's an ethic as well as a practice, and I'd love to be better at it and really my job. So as a, yeah. as, on a Christian programme, I want to ask you what I often ask people, guess. What part does the Christian faith play in your life? It's formative. I mean, I grew up with parents who helped me understand that God loved me from mm. a very early age. For mm. them, it wasn't about signing up to a certain set of ideas or conforming to a social convention. It was about a living relationship with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that was, the, I guess, the world that produced me. Mm -hmm. I think as you move through life and deal with all kinds of things, we have to reassess constantly mm -hmm. what would it look like mm -hmm. to understand God's love in this situation. Mm -hmm. Is that hard? Is that easy? How does it work? And so I think I'm on that path like many people are. Um, it's, not, it's not about having it all stitched up, but about trusting that at the end of the day, you're not on your own. Meredith, stay with us for a few minutes. I'd like to come back and, and continue that conversation a little later in the show. Let's welcome now Craig Gower and the Wesley Impact Band. What child is this who laid to rest on me? Yeah. 
the Galilee and the towns and cities where Jesus was raised and called his home. Capernaum, Nazareth, Tabgah, Magdala, Caesarea Philippi, Bethsaida, Tiberias, and of course the Sea of Galilee all feature in this six-part series as Keith Garner explains the first century context of biblical events. Jesus was born during a time of change in the political and economic leadership of this region fishermen around a lakeside was really one of the big businesses. Why Jesus? Why didn't people ignore him? Why did they take him seriously? And what are the questions we should be asking today if we're going to take Jesus seriously? The Man of Galilee is available now and comes with a study guide for leaders, small groups and individuals. For more, visit wesleymission.org.au. So I'm continuing that, that thought on words that are powerful, both in the old and, and, and in the contemporary world. Freedom is one of those words. It sits in the Bible as the opposite to bondage or slavery and begins in the accounts of, in the Old Testament, the children of Israel, as you read it in the Exodus, but it also speaks in our world today. The world of the Old Testament, like much of the ancient world, is set against the background of slavery. Let me read to you some words from Romans chapter 8, 31 through to 39. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who would bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it's written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We're considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we're more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I'm convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. We remind ourselves of how freedom was important in the ministry of Jesus. You remember uh, perhaps the story of when Jesus goes back to Nazareth and quotes from taking the scrolls and quoting from Isaiah 61, when he talks about proclaiming liberty. Freedom is realized in Christ. It isn't just a message he had for others. It was something that he was and is and demonstrated. It was a present possession to people who listened to it. A vital content of our mission. When I think back over my own ministry visits to Myanmar and South Africa, the week before uh, Nelson Mandela was was proclaimed to be free when, when, when that crossing of the Rubicon speech came. I thought, this is all about freedom. It's about people's lives being set free so that they could live in a way that was so very, very different. Freedom is something that all of us know is important. Generations of people in other parts of the world have sung about it. We still ache for it in terms of some of the people in our own country who yet feel that they've not experienced freedom in the fullest sense. Charles Kingsley, a long time ago, in a very different kind of world, wrote this, there are two freedoms. The false, where a person is free to do what he or she likes, and the true, where a person is free to do what he ought. Isn't that what freedom is? 
Freedom isn't just being uh, set free uh, because people say so, but free to do the thing that God wants from our lives. Wasn't it what Paul, when he was writing to the Galatian Christians meant, when he said, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then. Don't let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. I can't help but think that was one of the great messages of the early Christian preachers. Don't go back to whatever it is that you might call slavery. Be set free. And as, as through history, Christians have been, alongside many others, I might say, been involved in bringing a message of, of liberty to people's lives. It has been, don't go back to how it was. Now accept what is. And in these times that are very challenging, and we know that with COVID-19, we're facing some very difficult challenges. We want to enjoy freedom in the midst of it. And lots of people are struggling with that. They can't leave their home. They, they've got all kinds of restrictions placed upon their lives. And there is a freedom. There is a freedom, whatever we might find ourselves surrounding. I've done many parts to my job over the years, but for a period of time, I was involved as a prison chaplain, as well as a, a, a life within the life of the Christian church. And I met many, many people who you might say were far from free. They weren't able to walk out of the gates of, of a prison at night, but they were free because they discovered somehow that gift which sets a person free. And I hope that's something that you might hear as you share with us in this programme today. Whatever it is that binds you in, you can be set free. You can be given a whole new way of looking at the world. Set free to serve, set free to live, set free to enjoy the very best things in life, which are not about possessions, but about those things that bring to life purpose and meaning. If you would like to contact Keith and find out more about today's program, write to us at Wesley Mission, Post Office Box A5555, Sydney South, 1235. Or you can send us an email to impacttv at wesleymission.org.au. On our website, you can catch up on past episodes of Wesley Impact, find out more about our work, read online magazines and articles, and connect with us on social media. You can also connect through Keith's blog, and stay up to date on all the latest news and information from Wesley Mission, wesleymission.org.au. Thank you for taking time to be part of the programme today. My guest today is broadcast academic researcher, but also a Christian person who, who's engaged in a, a conversation together at Meredith Lake. It's been lovely to talk to you, Meredith. But before we finish, I want to ask you a couple of questions. First of all, the Christian perspective can seem somewhat marginalised in many people's understanding. How important do you think it is for, for Christians to be um, keeping a voice somewhere in the public sphere? Well, I think there's that line in the New Testament about giving an account of the hope that we have. And I think sometimes Christians can use their voices in ways that aren't hopeful, that can be constraining for other people, that maybe don't go down so well. But there is a way of Christians speaking a word of hope, a word of love. Mm -hmm. And I think those voices are always things that are useful to our neighbours, neighbours, uh, helpful for our society. And when we speak in a way that serves the common good, that's about serving, not putting the spotlight mm -hmm. on ourselves, mm -hmm. I think that kind of voice does have something to offer a nation that I think needs to make space for all its citizens. And to use Lewis as not surprised by joy, but we can be surprised by hope too, can't we? Sure. As people here are speaking hopeful words in the world. Let me, let me ask, if somebody was thinking about, they want, they're a Christian person and they want to be involved in communication in some way, what could you say to them um, that might be helpful? Well, I've thought about this a lot because I think it's actually about being in the world rather than speaking in the first instance. And I think what I was saying earlier about listening is actually the beginning, um, not to be the one who speaks, but to listen. It's the two ears, one mouth principle, I think. Mm -hmm. My own path has been surprising to me, not least. I'm not sure where it will lead or what kind of conversations I'll be able to have in the future. But I think... Uh, being attentive to other people, genuinely interested in them, not for what we might get out of them or what they might be able to give us, but for the sake of recognising that they too are made in the image of God, mm -hmm. they're valuable, their story matters. That that's the beginning, I think, of being someone who moves through the world in a Christian way. 
And it's been lovely to talk to you and to recognise that, that importance of listening. And the concept of, of, of listening as, as souls and individuals in the world is important, isn't it? And it's been lovely to talk to you, Meredith. If you've got any questions about anything you've heard on the programme today, any questions about the Christian faith or Wesley Mission and any help we can give to you, don't be afraid to be in touch. The contact details are on the screen now. I always look forward to spending this time with you and look forward to receiving messages, letters, emails, or whatever contact you make. Look forward to seeing you at the same time next week. Thank you and God bless you. Wesley Mission walks alongside people of all ages struggling with homelessness, addictions, mental health issues and financial stress. To find out more, visit wesleymission.org.au.